Hi to all lovers of Things for Free. Today we are going to talk about types of free energy, such as atmospheric electricity and radio waves. Atmospheric electricity has been making scientists restless for a long time. Everybody wants to find the source of internal and free energy. Today we are going to show how to collect at least several watts of energy. I stretched the wire and attached it to the mast in order to utilize atmospheric electricity. Now we are going to do a test. Let's apply voltage to the bulb. The bulb is turning on. It's an insulator, a transformer and a diode bridge with capacitors inside. Let me connect it to the cell phone. It's charging. The wire isn't just for utilizing atmospheric electricity, but it also fits for long wavelength. For instance, TV towers, masts and so on. There is a long list of them. Now I'm going to tell you about what atmospheric electricity is. Scientists are inspired by Tesla's ideas of converting static atmospheric electric energy into low voltage uninterrupted current. They conducted comprehensive studies of the Earth and the upper atmosphere. They came to the conclusion that there is potential difference between the atmosphere and the Earth's surface. About 300,000 volts, the Earth's surface is negatively charged, while the ionosphere is positively charged. The voltage in the clouds can be from 120 to 150 volts per square meter in dry weather, but the voltage steps down as we reach the Earth's surface, we can call it our Earth capacitor, which carries 300 kilovolts. Is there any capacitor it may have current leakage? About 1,800 amperes. Experiments to detect electrical charge in the air have been carried out since 19th century. Experimental balloons with hydrogen were lifted reaching an altitude of 300 meters. They got some important results – 1.8 ampere current and 400 volts. Maybe balloons that were lifted helped them to get such results? They were made of aluminum leaves, the envelopes of those balloons were made of internal aluminum ribs, and its surface was covered with needle metal points. All contact elements were made of aluminum with the radium preparation as an ionizer. Of course, our approach is much easier and height is much lower. The mast is burnt, it was a fire here. We decided to employ unique technology, we simply inserted it in the cement base. We made this wood smaller in diameter in order for the wood to fit it all the way down up to this point. We attached it all to an insulator. The thunderstorm is going to start. I forgot to mention that the ionizing layer changes. It depends on season, time of the day and weather. Its effect changes as well. It induces voltage enough to bake something. I can feel it. Now I'm connecting a wire to it, in order to put it closer to the step-down transformer. We pull the wire here and ground it the steel pin. Let's apply current to it. It's really low current. It's enough just for an glow lamp. Take a look. Let's try to apply it to a fluorescent lamp. If you take a close look, you can see that the lamp is shining. In case if you insulate one lamp holder and connect the wire to the other lamp holder, it turns on quite brightly. With the help of this device, we increased electrical current by 1000 times. I had been reading lots of schematics, and I finally stopped at a TV transformer. It's a flyback transformer, TVS110LC, and a discharger. When it sparks, it turns voltage into short pulses. As a result, a high-frequency transformer lowers voltage. It's wrapped up several times, I chose it experimentally. It supplies 4 to 5 volts, the voltage is further applied to the radio. Let's try to turn it on. This cord is from the roof and this one is grounded. I'm connecting them. We can see it's turned on. The radio also has to start working. It works quite badly, because the setup itself causes failures. Nevertheless, it works. Let's measure voltage. Here is a coil, a diode bridge with capacitors. We don't use anything else here. 4 volts, it's unstable. It's enough just to supply the radio. We can't even turn our cassette player on. 
Now we will try to charge a cell phone with the setup's electricity. Let me connect it. It's charging. It's the cell phone that we charged with railway's electricity. It's one more alternative way of charging a cell phone. Of course, it's quite weak, it's not enough to charge a smartphone, but anyway, we can charge a cell phone. Let's try to apply this voltage to the light emitting diode. It shines quite brightly, though the voltage applied to it is so low. We need to change the distance between the wires, it's around 3 mm now. The more precise you are with the distance, the better output signals you will get. Did you like the video? Share it with your friends, write in your comments what you would like us to make our next video about. How to make a powerful wind power generator, how to obtain power from the sun, or how to utilize the Earth's potential difference.